Hey kids, it's Mark Miller here. Welcome. Sound should be a little bit different today. Hey there. Hey, guess what? What? I have some good and bad news for you. You're doing it right as I start the show? Yeah, what you got? This mountain kid's been in our mailbox. Our mailbox? <laughs> <laughs> the mountain kid has been in the mailbox? We never thought to look in the mailbox. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, that's good and bad news. So, I got this, kids. This is what we're doing. Wait, so do you have now two cooling systems? You can be twice as hot? I have two cooling systems. I could be twice as hot. That's correct. These are the two cooling systems stacked on top of each other right here. Wow. Okay. I'm sorry about that. No, I guess it really makes a lot of sense to, to come in. I was like, why is she coming in now? Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> you didn't want to see me? I do want to see you. I was just like, you know, just starting. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for checking. At least we now know the history of that. How you doing, Roy? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, not, not, not too bad at all. I bet Rory was happy to see me. Rory was happy to see you, Karen. Yes. I'd be happier when she feels better. Doesn't sound much fun. Yeah, so audio is a little different this morning because my, uh, my aftershocks decided to no longer be recognizable as a microphone, only as a headset. I had this problem with them once before, never solved it on, the one, on this machine. Had to try them on another machine, and that pair worked on the other machine. This pair only worked on this machine, and now this pair is acting like the other pair. I tried to factory reset, that didn't work. And I'm like, about to give up on the aftershocks, kids. About to give up on them. They're not bad, they're comfortable, they feel great, and I, the problem is I can't find a great replacement that's fast. Yeah. Mind you, you have a backup plan. The backup plan is, now that you've got the cooler, switch to the other machine, right? Oh, yeah, they might work on the other machine. Well, they might. Or other pair, at least, yeah. They might. All right, kids, let's, let's get into this. Let's write That's some code. Theory. Shall we write some code? So, yeah. We're trying to make me fly. Now, I... Uh, you know, I'm a little bit embarrassed. I've, I've probably done worse in this particular challenge than in any other thing we've ever done on this show. I feel like okay. that's pretty true. Um, I'm getting close, you know, but part of the problem is too is, you know, it's, it involves some concentration and thought or it involves some, you know, planning and none of those, none of those happen on the show because our show sponsors are, uh, <laughs> And ignorance. Brute force and ignorance. By the way, there's a little mini version of me over there on the side. Uh, right down the bottom there. Right over the bottom there. Hey, how's it going? Um, how you doing, Campbell? Good. What's up? It's um, another one of the mounting systems that we have. The second missing mounting <laughs> bracket has been delivered. I now have two. I got the missing mounting brackets for the LGA 1700. They've apparently been in our mailbox for some unknown amount of time. Well, that actually is awesome that both were delivered, but I've bought a different cooling system and I'm going to go with that one instead. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, we want to do get some fly-in going here. That's what we're trying to do. Let me move this off to the side. How you doing, Weird Beard? We're here to subscribe! Three months! Right, as a co-host, you, you can't be like, Whoa, someone subscribed! Holy cow! I'm not in shock, I'm... I'm happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Suggested you're doing something right. <laughs> I know! Again! I Rory! figure out what that thing is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, fine. He's right! He's right! He's right. Alright. Um... We're trying to get this thing to land. And, in fact, we're trying... I'll tell you... You know, this is me before the show. Should I prepare? Should I do anything? Should I try to research this? Um, no. 
also mean like that a little bit. So, you know, for anybody who's here expecting me to just whip this out and, and get this code, you know, working really fast, uh, this is going to be not that show. Um, okay. That's what my take of it on it is. But I think we might be able to get something going here. What I want to do is I want to uh, see where we left off last time. That's what I want to do. Oh, I got to turn on the Mark Flies overlay. And that's turned on. Let's launch me. Uh, okay, it looks like we just changed the overall top for that. And I want to say let's go to 223. So there's the mark. What's over here? Is it this? All the, all the coolers stacked up or showing up off on the side. How'd that work, Roy? Did you by chance see that? You drifted a little past the line, maybe a hair's breadth extra, and then came back again. So it wasn't bad, yeah. but I wouldn't have said it was right on either. What is that right there? Where are you? Is it that guy? It's that guy right there. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right, one more time. Let's do it. Oh, now we're going from the other direction. Uh-oh, uh-oh. From the other direction, we didn't cross. Well, that time we did. Now, Evan was coming up with kind of an interesting idea for this. He was suggesting that um, he was suggesting that we um, approach with a uh, a velocity that's set based on distance um, okay. the closer we are the slower the closer down to the uh, um, the ground we get uh, I mean the closer we get to zero in terms of our speed um, I'm distracted by me being floating up in the air I just want to go find that, that yeah. called mark I default y. It, but I suspect you've got an alternative Y value, haven't you? Yeah, because we were testing the other thing. Okay, we're going to send it back to 1050, I think. Let's do refresh. And RM should bring me down. Maybe I didn't refresh it. Maybe I just thought yeah. I did. There's a refresh. Now let's try it. There we go. Okay. Um, I wanted to try something inside this mess. I had an idea. Um, I want to go to really don't tap to next reference. Why not? Calculate approach thrust. Can I get a tab to reference here? No. Oh my god. We're gonna. I'm gonna about to. My patience for this is is uh, waning. Uh, but let me see if I make this one change, and then we'll uh, we'll maybe get out of here for a second. I'm gonna go. We're gonna go hit this next. Can you see that? Uh, this yes. guy. I'm gonna hit that. Um, calculate approach thrust. Somewhere in here, I remember a hard-coded setting of, of the thrust. It gets the, this tilt to match thrust, but it doesn't. I thought there was we had a this dot thrust is equal to. Max port possible horizontal thrust. And no, Taptonix reference. What is wrong, kids? Tilt to match thrust. Not seen here. Let's look for 
this dot thrust equals pump. So maybe no tab to next reference, but Shift F12 should work either with Code Rush's version of the function or Studios, depending on that. We should be able to get all references, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to quickly go go get it and find it. So the, uh, we did jump over a commented out piece. Um, yeah. And and I'm seeing here update thrust from tilt. Um, all right, let's go back. So the thing I wanted to change, I can't really do. So it's a match thrust. Well, the change I wanted to make was essentially um, something like that. I just wanted to see. Okay. Let's see if that makes any difference at all. It may not at all. Um, the current thrust magnitude, it's going to mess with this. That current thrust magnitude. Oh yeah, this is going to uh, this is going to kill me if I can't use tabx reference right now inside of here. Um, let's refresh and see what happens. Oh, it is much bigger and it totally overshoots it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not happy with any of this. I'm not happy okay. with any of this, and I'm not happy with my my uh, approach to this either. So uh, I'm I'm just stepping away for a sec. I'm gonna take a break from all this, and we'll come back after I've given it some thought and get some brain power coming in, that sort of thing. Um, that's what we're gonna do. Um, next. <laughs> Welcome, Flavor Creations. Welcome, Flavor Creations. Glad you're here. We're going to have slight adjustments where, you know, Fred's name tag moves over. There's a little version of me over there. Hey! How's it going? Um, that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, a lot of things just kind of changed as it started up today. Kind of like a, it's kind of like an omen that says, you know, build your new machine more. Uh, yeah. That's coming up on, on uh, there it is right there, Beast Build 2022. It's coming up on uh, Thursday. So we're going to do it Thursday. Rory, was, we can't make it Thursday, I think, anyway, right? No, Buddy? that's right, I can't. So Richard Campbell's going to be here, and um, he's going to be dealing with my antics, and we're going to be building it, and those are the pieces that we're going to put together for it. Um, Flagration says, I brought you from some brain power, but not sure it is much help. Yeah, I don't know. This is me. I'm like, right now, I'm like, okay, well, let's get at least one thing to work. Arctic liquid freezer, that's the wrong one. That's not it. Thought I generated the new, uh, the new uh, piece for that. It looks like I didn't. We'll have to get that new image there, because we're using the other freezer inside. Um, okay. I'm going to get out of here. I want to start up a new instance of Visual Studio. We're just going to start clean here. And we're going to go in and we're going to try and get... We're going to try and get... New project. Um, let's do WPF. Sounds good. I'll take it. 
and we're going to call this um, we're going to call this Asus controller test like that because this is an Asus controller. Fine, Fair I enough. used a .NET six long term support. Yep. No, do I want that? Fine, I'll do it for now. I'll do it for now. <clears throat> okay, now what I want to do is figure out how to talk to this guy. This guy I'm pretty sure is connected already. Is it Bluetooth? I think it's Bluetooth. Um, where's my show Bluetooth oh, yeah. devices? It's, no, it's there. That's all already. You saw it at the top? I just yeah, wanted yeah. to scroll down and show you, this is the piece of crap I'm dealing with now. It should have said connected voice comma music, and it's dead. It's not going to, it's just not working. All right, I've got an Asus, Asus gamepad pair. Cool. Now let's figure that out. How do we get and see that? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> talk to um, Gamepad C Sharp mm -hmm. Gamepad Controller. I mean, I assume there are probably um, mm -hmm. gaming APIs, so like XNA or SFML, that kind of stuff. Those are some fancy letters. Uh, I know, like, direct input from maybe a long time ago. I did something like this. Uh, how to get a joystick data using C Sharp Net. Okay, what do we got? 30 for this one. 13 for this one. Use Slim DX. That suggestion? Okay, so it's Slim DX. Okay. And what was this one for 30? Mm. Sharp DX. So Sharp DX has got 30 and Slim DX has got 13. Now, Let's go see if we can. Are we reasonably convinced that for our purposes, joystick is the same as controller, or at least has an overlap enough? I guess nope. technically there's a joystick on the controller, but you know, worst case. Yep. Let me try it. Let me try another search. Copper Beardy is in the house. Uh, .NET 6 has long-term support, and it has been a while since I looked into it. Looked at info on it. I use Arctic in my rig. I like it. It's display creations. Yeah. Cool. I mean, that looks fairly reasonable, doesn't it? You get it to iterate through all devices and figure out that, sure enough, one of them is a... or, or restricting it specifically to... Oh, game oh no, no! It's Edmund! It's Edmund! Edmund! You're melting! Look out! It says, what's up, Milan Adam? Yeah, look, we'll try it. We'll see what we get. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we've got Sharp DX. We're just gonna we're just gonna run at it. Is what we're gonna do. So let's uh, manage new packages. We're gonna throw two different things at it. We'll try. Wait, what's happening here? <laughs> That's not what we're used to. What's going on? I, I don't know. I chose right click, manage NuGet packages. Okay. okay. I think I just selected something different. Uh, we will browse and we're gonna. Do you want to try Slim DX? Which are you feeling lucky with any of these? Uh, the last one, go with the 30? The Sharp DX. That, I, I like the, the style of that. That's nice and simple, hopefully. Alright, let's do it. I'm gonna just take a quick Surely little down. float around up to the corner over here and back down to where I normally go. <laughs> you, sir, are dumber than me. Uh, Flight Creation says. I have used the NZXT Kraken. 
in a build for my uncle. I hated it because it wasn't based on, on motherboard headers and wouldn't turn on unless you ran NZXT software. I hate it. Hate it when people wow. are like, you know, when when hardware companies are like, install this software. Tell us your email. We need to know your email for the software that controls the hardware to work. NVIDIA does this, by, by the way. Um, yeah. What's with the audio? Is Mark in a little boy's room? Yeah. Yeah, we had audio problems. This guy failed on me. I'm having some failure of equipment here. Yep. This failed. Something else failed. I'm not even remembering what it is. We're gonna, this better not fail. This is the black on black controller. It's it's camouflage. You can't quite see yeah. it. Yeah. But I got to do this for you to see it. Sure. This, this is called separation, by the way. It's a professional photography term when you can actually see around an object, which is kind of needed when you're presenting things in 2D. Okay, I've got Sharp DX here. Uh, cool. Uh, yep. Notice I also got something down here called X input. I'm not sure okay. what, if that's useful or not. Let's start with start. Start with Sharp DX. We're going to accept whatever this license agreement is. Hopefully, there won't be too many legal, legally contractually binding pieces that I have to deal with there. And is it in? It looks like it's in. Okay. Let's grab some sample code. All right, let's see what we can do. So that's for Slim DX. Uh, let's create a new method out here called uh, Find Controller. And let's put that in there. And what do we got? something sharp dx and direct input you can install it via sharp dx dot dx oh. direct input okay so we probably took the high level library and not the one that would have hauled it in anyway I'm I'm on it Rory we're gonna we're gonna make this work nothing can stop me now Okay, good. I was just thinking, except for this not being found. Except if that doesn't come up at all. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, nothing can stop me. Watch this. Oops. Uh, now what do I got? Uh, now I bet it's a using. Sweet. Okay. Oh, look at that. Okay. Okay. Just a spelling error. We'll fix that. Uh, okay. I'm excited. I'm gonna run it. You ready? Might you excited, call Roy? Find controller from somewhere. What'd you say? You might want to call find controller from somewhere. I do what I want, that. Rory. I do what I want. By the way, kids, in case oh, you want to lose that, feel free to who's, not call it. That's entirely valid. Who's the disembodied voice out there? Uh, wait, Edmund 311 is asking Is it the new cooling system finally installed on the i9 making that noise? No. The noise is because I had to go with a backup microphone, which is mounted right over there at this camera I'm pointing to. It's mounted at this camera right here. That's where it is. Uh, and uh, we're using that because uh, my aftershocks decided to be unreliable, unreliable today. Uh, in case you're wondering who that disembodied voice is out there, that disembodied voice is none other than Roy Becker! But you know what it is! the mounting kits I've been waiting for weeks for them they've been in my mailbox here in Valencia that I didn't check it's got like I'm apparently a side additional family members to walk in with yet more of these right? no we only just I only a, ordered two rolling gag, right? that just is another yeah. one. it doesn't matter the, to be fair the Arctic one didn't have any lights on it and it was like when I got it I was like well okay I got it because it said LGA 1700 in the description but I did not read so it said LGA LGA 1700 kit in the description. It, that was in Spanish, which I don't speak. 
And I said, okay, cool. I'm going to get that one because it's got support for LGA 1700. But I didn't read the, the word after that, which was uh, deponibar, or something like that, which means available. The kit is available. So, um, you know, that's kind, of, uh, that's kind of what we're dealing with here. Um, just on my other machine, slightly distracted, getting something started on the second machine. Back over to you. Uh, Find controller's being called. we got a break point. Let's run it. Okay. All right. I, I have a good feeling about this. This is going to be like the breakthrough that we need, Rory. Yes. Now I hear, but don't see. There it is. It's on the break point. The drone flying now. Oh, I see. Yes, I agree. Also, the coins are gone. I hear the music. Music's there, yeah. I've got a button to turn it on individually, which I can do. Here. It should be coming from the back. Hold on a second. Let me go. I'll be right back with you kids. I'm going to switch to another scene, and I'm going to disappear for a second, and I'll come right back. Um... Okay, I'm back. Yeah. Okay. We've got coins, we've got Fred, we've got you. Everything seems okay. Now let's step through the camera. Here we go. All right. New direct input. Okay. Empty good. We're going to get all these devices. Whoa! Nothing. And then we were trying for a gamepad. Huh. If not found, look for well, a joystick. What alternatives do we have to gamepad? Oh no, we're moving on to that afterwards, I see. Right. Yeah, well, I don't know. Right. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Expectation is okay. We tried Game Pass, and now we're going to try joysticks. We got something. Ah, oh, nothing. I don't. I didn't see us hit here. Wait, wait, wait. It's not turned on. Everybody, calm down. It just turned it on. Everybody, calm okay. down. Oh my gosh. Please, Rory. Yep. Please calm down. I'm, I'm, right, I'm one okay. more time. I, I'm, I'm going to be calm. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's go. We got a game pass. We have a device. Oh, yeah, nothing can stop us, Rory. We're going to be undefeated today. Undefeated. Mark okay. versus the code. Okay, so we're good. We've got a game pad. What do we got here? Joystick is equal to new. I wonder if this should be joystick and not game pad. Let's see what happens. Joystick. What do we got? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Mm. And it just accidented. Mm. Well, uh, this isn't our code failing, this is somebody else's code. I think you may have a point in that if we found a gamepad, should we not naturally make a gamepad around the ID? Yeah, it did that again. Hold on a second. Going to my second machine. All right, back over to you. Okay. Um, let's try again. Uh, there it is again. I am suspecting that we might have an issue with this guy. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see if we can, if we turn it off. It's off now, let's see what happens. Because that seemed pretty repeatable. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's uh, see if we can repeat that. Can I get the problem? Let me run it again. Hold on. Run again. There it is. Give me a sec. Is this just the attempt this. to display something not terribly safe in response to hovering over a variable? Yeah, that's what I think is the problem. That's what I think is the problem. Okay. I just want to talk to one of the devs. Okay, 
Done. All right, let me turn that off. Turn it off up here. We're going to come back. Okay. All right, joystick. It's a joystick. Capabilities. Nice, look at this. It's button count 10. Nice. <clears throat> Do I have 10 buttons? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Mm, maybe more than that. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. I'm not sure. Na, 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 na. So on Thursday, kids, we're going to do a beast build. Richard Campbell's going to be here, you know, at the regular time. Doing that right there. Beast build 2022. Uh, we're building a new machine, and the new machine is hopefully going to be better. Well, it's going to be better. It's hopefully going to be faster. Well, it's going to be faster. Uh, hopefully, OBS is going to play videos in sync with the new machine. Because we're wow. throwing the fastest technology that we can get our grubby little fingers on at the the problem. That's, That's what so we're cool. doing. Hope so. All right. So we found a joystick. We found a joystick. I don't know why we're doing that, but fine. Uh, what effects does it have? No. Sad. Okay. Uh, Happy things like uh, feedback, right? Or well, haptic feedback. This is sometimes. I guess. Cool. Yeah. That would be kind of cool, but we don't need that. All right. Uh, yeah. Now then, what's happening here? Pull events from joystick. So I guess I'm just going to run it. And so what's in data then? Or, or have we got on, that's already output that? Oh, yeah. i got to go to the output window, I think. Because this is where I'm expecting them to be, right? Let's see if we hit buttons. No, no, no. Console window. Not output. Uh, how do I get to count console window? It's a WPF app. Oh, interesting. Good point. Um... I thought those well, messages came here. Is it, is it the debug dot right line that throws out there? Yeah, maybe that's what I have to do, change it to debug right line. For some reason, I thought they were redirected out here. Let's try that. There might be circumstances where that happens, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Let's set a breakpoint here. Let's do a hot reload. Can I get that and set a breakpoint? Got a breakpoint. Now let's just hit buttons. I'm mashing buttons. And no breakpoint. No, I'm not even getting a breakpoint here. In the while loop. Huh. Mm. Are we not where we expect? Are we somewhere further up? Oh, no. That's <laughs> the answer. I don't understand this. There's no data, right? There's nothing there. Why would we be here? Hitting F10. Okay, now all of a sudden we're hitting breakpoints now. Okay, great. And then run, but I don't come back here again. This is weird. I, feel, I would expect every time I hit run to come back and stop there at that breakpoint. Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me just do it again. Run. Oops. I added a use in. Can I do that during edit and continue? Oh, I can't in the new version of Visual Studio, it looks like. That's um, nice. Okay, so there's one, two, three. This is what I'm expecting to hit. Okay. And then I'm going to hit the buttons on the mash up. Oh, I got something. Ooh. State. Offset is Y. Raw offset sequence time spent damp value. Okay. Offset feels like they're meant to say axis, but sure. And then raw offset. All right. Hold on. Hold the on. Numeric version of that? Hold on, guys. I got something for you. Here. 
Okay, so let's look at it. All right, cool, 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 cool. Look at this, guys. Nice. Real-time feedback from the device. Okay, so what's happening here? It says offset Z. Uh, hold on, let's do this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm 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 doing the joystick. Sure. Hold on. Which is clearly hold made up of X and Y, which is what you'd expect. <clears throat> yeah. Let's get a. Uh, we need to move that slightly to the right if we can. Let me get my Some autofocus right here on that. Uh, you got it. There we go. We have focus. Come on, you. Give me a good focus. There we go. All right, so let's try this. Okay. Okay, that's So okay. it says rotation Y. It's got a value. Uh, I'm going to move it up. And I'm seeing rotation X and Y. So different kinds of things are happening as I move it up. And I'm going to pull it back down. So all the way to the bottom, rotation Y is 65533. Three. All the way to the top, rotation Y is almost zero. Okay, and sweet. And if we leave it in the center, do we get a feedback value? It's about halfway through. I guess, yeah. Okay, sweet. All right, cool. Um, I love it. Yeah, there's a lot of so, the comments there. Absolutely right. Don't see it as a circuit. I just see it as two separate controls, X and Y, just built into a single joystick. Yes, I agree with you, Thindal. Thanks for that. Yes, 100%. I don't know what sequence means. Timestamp. I, I think it's literally kind of um, because you're receiving packets from the device. It's like sending over a UDP uh, or as opposed to TCP. So they can get out of sequence, potentially. You really want to pay attention to sort of the latest ones. If you, if you receive something that says far right 50 sequence, and then you later receive something that says 49, then you discard that because that was before the one you've already received. Wait, can you say that one more time, Roy, with the sequences? So Tell think me of about these the... things that are coming to you as like a fire hose, right? It's sending you 785, 786, 787, 788, just as fast as it can, right? But mm -hmm. the means of transport is such that the, they don't guarantee arriving in a given order. It, it oh, yeah, notice will. there's a couple 778s, seven, seven, like, right up here. Yeah, so it's coming in twice because it didn't think it arrived. Um, and, so and the timestamp is, is the same for both of those. Yeah, so essentially, if you receive an instruction with a kind of, if you think of it as an identity, 791, you know two things. First of all, you have received 791, but also you don't care about anything before that now. And if <laughs> earlier things come in now, you just throw them away. You're only looking at the most recent that you've you've gathered, essentially. And that's what that's oh. allowing you to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Charlie, uh, I see, uh, uh, hold on. Seekers will be so that you can disregard old values, I'm guessing. Oh, good, this good. This really says. Spot actually there. The seven seven eights, the two of them because one's for X and one's for Y. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so what I got. Pindle's asking, do you know why UDP has gotten such an upswing in popularity over the pandemic? Uh VPNs? <laughs> I don't know. Rory says VPNs. Uh, no, it's a packet of state data, so you have two controls. Yeah, that's what Dendel's saying in the same sequence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Copper Beauty saying hi to Thindle. Thindle saying right back hi. Does require a handshake. Groan, Thindle. Well, I don't know why you're groaning. Uh, okay, so that feels pretty cool, pretty good. Uh, we don't really care about sequence, I think. And I don't really think we care about timestamp. It's just whatever the latest thing is that comes in, I guess we could compare with the previous one and make sure, hey, is this timestamp? you know, bigger or smaller than the other one. Um, yeah, I mean, unless you get fairly chaotic network, you're likely to receive these in order anyway. So that's fine. But what yeah. happens is occasionally a packet can disappear off around your network and get to you rather late. Now, that said, 
do something contrary to what actually was the most recently received stuff because it went through that state earlier then it could disrupt what you were doing but there should be so few of those it shouldn't matter anyway um so karen rory has been sick with covid yeah she's been out for like about 10 days so just feeling we haven't had a uh you know a mom made dinner in um uh, in about 10 days, to the point that the kids were asking for vegetables yesterday. Wow. And uh, and I just, I'm bringing all that up and telling you the story because I'm smelling the best homemade dinner coming from <laughs> upstairs. I'm like, oh, wow, it smells good. Um, <laughs> so, so is Karen feeling better or has life found a way to just have the kids evolve and cook themselves? No, Karen's feeling better. And she's oh. making, she's, yeah, so she's she's making the, the meal there. Um, yeah, okay, that's exciting and cool. So we want to get this to control me, and we wanted to send messages out to the command uh, w window. I think let's go look at, let's go, we'll turn that off for a sec, and let's go look at um, how we're going to do that in the code. And I want to bring up the D&D &D app, because I think that's where I'm going to stick it. What we just did, so we're going to... We're going to use the same NuGet packages that we just did. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, let's see where we want to, where we want to put this guy. Um, I want to see where... Do I want to actually do it here or do I want to do it... Uh, I think this guy does not listen to drone commands. And I actually want to put it in the one that's speaking to the drone commands, I think. I'm just doing a, uh, a find for drone commands in here. And I think we're going to come up empty. No, we have some. Okay. So I think right now we're only listening to drone commands. Mm. Got a drone commands client. Because I want to send everything out to drone commands. I want to basically flood it with messaging, is what I want to do. So I want to be able to live control the tilt using the joysticks uh, and the zoom and the um, uh, the z-axis movement as well using the joysticks. So are you That's looking to use the joysticks as an absolute location to go to, or a direction to head in and, and the speed, I guess? Well, uh, for tilt, it'll be an absolute tilt. Right. Pretty sure about that. I'm pretty sure because I want immediate responsiveness mm -hmm. on the tilt. Uh, for the scale, you know, in other words, the z-axis, uh, I want to, um, I think I want to ease in that direction, I think. And, and I think in fairness for the tilt, any tilt, is going to take from, go from the current location to it, so it will, there'll be some speed in that transition. But it'll send the absolute, and then it will, um, the receiver will figure out, the, the, the browser um, source will figure out how quickly to move it to match. Yep. Okay? That's yep. what my intention is. Um, okay, so I got a drone command client down in here. And, uh, and that's all I've got. Just a couple things in here. I want to see, do I have a chat message command in here? Chat, add chat. Um, send message. So it's a formatted Twitch channel chat message. Sweet. Joined channel. Hmm. Nobody's using send message anywhere else. Let's go look at that. Okay, let's go look at this guy. Coder's channel name. Uh, 
Okay. So, I guess I'm going to create a drone commands chat. And I don't think I'm going to pass in a Twitch client because I think we've already got a reference to the drone commands client down here, right? Drone commands client. Slot, yeah. So we don't need this. And that's going to be the channel name. Drone commands channel username. I think I just want drone commands channel name. Which happens to be the same. Okay. What just happened? Did I do a rename? Did you think I did a rename? Oh, it was already in existence up here. Okay, good. Okay. Drone commands channel. That's what I want. Okay. Drone commands chat. I think that will work. So uh, admin three one one is making an interesting point. It says wait. So every joystick touch will show up in chat. Mm-hmm. My witty commentary yep. is going to scroll right off the page. It's not because we're sending it to a special chat room. Uh, we've got uh, a twitch.tv slash drone commands. This is where. Surly Dev controls his drones. Yes. And if we come in here, this is basically set up to just receive a flood of chat. So if I come in here and I type in drone and uh, enter that in there, I just entered that command there, we should see, there it is, Code Rush just launched from the spaceship, which I think is behind me, somewhere down over here, the Code Rush spaceship. Somewhere down behind there. And that's the command. And so if I come in and uh, do the command again and pass in a negative one, it should destroy. And so you won't see them in this in our chat room, but if you were by chance over in the drone commands, you'd see them. Yes, so there's a couple things we debugging. have to do. We, what did you say? I said it makes for good debugging. <laughs> yeah, it makes for good debugging, and it makes for a noise-free space. Indeed. Uh, you'll need to downsample that. Uh, I think you're right. We're going to maybe send something out every five seconds or you know, something like that, every one second. So we're going to do that. We need to temporarily promote people to a, like a mod or the ability to, to spam it. Because basically what I'm, my, my idea that I think is kind of cool is that if we make this app a standalone, well, I don't know, maybe we don't have to do that, but if we made it standalone, and you had something like this, you could download the app, hook it to your device, and control me using one of these. Which, I don't know, you might like that. And then you could use some channel points. What'd you say? Uh, it could be very interesting, yeah. I think it would be fun. So, um, okay, so that's, this is our target space right here. Uh, all right, next. So we've got drone commands chat is there. Um, I want to, uh, I think, create uh, a folder in here. And we'll kind of work in that folder for now. And this is going to be the fly mark, I think, is what we're going to call it. And inside here, we'll add a class. And the class is going to be called um, I don't know, Aces Controller. Something like that, I guess. Yeah, that's probably a bad name. Um, or to call the, oh, I'll keep that namespace there. Uh, maybe joystick listener. Like that. Uh, and I think we're gonna have to use uh, threading. We're going to start a thread to this so that it'll, it'll do this. And I'm like not at all familiar with threads on this, Rory. Are you by chance, Howard? What's your familiarity level with like? Um, yeah. Enough to be dangerous. Probably not enough to get it done right. <laughs> okay. Well, I mine is enough that I need to go look up some you know sample source code on this. Uh, yeah. Start uh, a thread. 
you know, start a background print, something along those lines. From memory, I think you effectively tell the system to not, not so much just launch a thread, but a thread, and then you give it an entry point, which is typically a method. That looks like it's it. That looks interesting, yeah. I'll take it. It's got 300 upvotes to it. Um, Edmund concurs. Thread.start with a lambda. Yeah. Okay, Essentially cool. Essentially what you've got there. That's good. All right, let's get it into a, a method. Gee, what is going on with You've lost that the keyboard. extra brace. That might be why. Yeah, no, I was trying to hit it, and I just kept missing. Um, all right, so we'll do a method that's going to say uh, start listening thread. Like that, and I think when the paste came in, I pasted an extra um, brace in. Okay, so thread current is background is true. Run your code here. Sweet. Um, we're going to maybe something like this. Get latest uh, joystick position. Like that, and then I think I want to thread dot sleep. Uh, I started putting S's at the end of my namespace line and dropping the braces. Wait, oh no, semicolons. I started putting semicolons at the end of my namespace line, and uh, right. So he's not using nesting classes inside namespaces, he's using the declarative for the rest of this file, use namespace such and such. Fine. It gives a little bit more width. I tell you, I love what this happened when I just hit semicolon. I love that. That's no, nice. I mean, I'm totally into it. I love it. It's a, it's a great thing. Um, thanks, Edmund. Uh, I'm with you 100%. And then so here, we're going to sleep. So this could actually control our throttling. Right, right here. We could come in and say, let's sleep for 200 milliseconds. So we'll send no more than 10 a second, something like that. Okay? So it'll be kind of responsive, maybe 300, like that, 30 now, seconds. That so three said, seconds. you're not I actually said 10 running seconds. a loop Five. there, are you? You've, you've got a method, it runs, it starts, it mm -hmm. runs through, and I don't think it goes back and repeats. That's a good point. Good point, Ryan. Thank you. Okay, and let's go declare this. So that's going to, it's going to get the latest joystick position, send it out, that sort of thing. Um, now, should we kind of have something that says turn it on, turn it off, enable it or not? Um, Rupert Dev says, yeah, the new namespace directive is awesome. Yeah, I'm loving it now. I saw it, you know, it's funny. I saw it in like um, documentation, and I was like, okay, okay, like that. But when I just typed in the semicolon there, and everything went away, and I realized, oh yeah, that gives me more space left yeah. to write. It's, it's interesting. It's you you much look better. at it initially, and you say, okay, I get a bit more space. But look at the effort I've got to put in. I've got to go down there, and I've got to get rid of the braces and all this. But they've mm -hmm. taken the effort away. Just the, the putting the semicolon in place and having it happen automatically. Mm -hmm. So much more appealing because of that. So much more. Evan says global usings are amazing as well. Uh, I haven't got my head wrapped around those yet. I also read about those and I was like, yeah, those scare me, I think. And I think I kind of ran away. Um, what do you like about them, Edmund? What, 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 are we, uh, what am I missing on them? And uh, I'll put that, pose that question to you as, as we. Uh, as we uh, keep going here. So the start listening thread, I think we're gonna maybe start it from something else, or maybe, I haven't quite figured that out yet. If we're gonna create an instance of this and then call start listening. How many of these do we hope to have concurrently? Because I, I kind of feel like you only need the one, right? So if mm -hmm. that's the case, then this could be a static class, static um, start mm -hmm. listening. Also, mm -hmm. 
we might want to store the thread itself in some kind of field so that we can get a reference to, to what we're going to stop should we ever decide to do that and maybe prevent ourselves from starting a second one by checking to see if that thread is occupying that field. Yeah, hold on, Evan's saying no sub marks scroll the top line tend to hide all the usings. Global usings, uh, <laughs> delete lines one through six. Uh, global, weird, weird devs, global usings are good for those namespaces that clutter up every code file. Ah, 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 ah I see. So yeah. all of these we can get rid of. So anything that's so utilitarian that it, it almost will never be wanting to be removed. Okay. Got it. Wait. Using system.threading. There we go. So I just have one. Yes, it's much better. Agreed. Um, okay. Okay, so let's implement a couple of these suggestions. Uh, we're going to go maybe static. Um, and let's see here. Uh, you know, I was thinking we could also stop it without, I was thinking we could stop it from here. We could just have a field variable here that we change to false and then it will exit. Uh, okay. Mm. Yeah. So in that way we could say, you know, start listening. And then we have another method called stop listening. Like this, here's my idea. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you see if you see if you like this or hate it. But it kind of goes like this. There's gonna we're gonna get a field variable that's a type boolean called listening, like this, and then start listening is gonna say set that to true, and then we're gonna say hey while listening do the loop, and then stop listening is gonna simply set it to false. And okay, I think so that'll like work. the question then is does the thread fundamentally stop? when it runs out of stuff to do? Or do we need to take a reference to that thread anyway and tell it to stop? I don't know. <laughs> Edmund says it stops. So that's good. Edmund says it stops? <clears throat> Fine. So it looks like we've got something there that says start listening and stop listening. Uh, get latest joystick position is there. Uh, I think it's time to go in Bring up the NuGet package manager. Okay. One method we don't have, though, is the stop co-hosting method. No, I just press method. this button right here. I'm going to send you these uh, LGA mounting kits. You want one? Oh, sure. I, I, I yeah. got two. Okay. <laughs> uh, in case I've scared anyone, it should have been a pause co-hosting because I, I will be back tomorrow and uh, all will be good. I'm not disappointed. I'll be anyway. back tomorrow. Won't be here uh, Thursday. Not here Thursday. Got a bit of a repeating that... Thursday problem. Repeating Thursdays? Yeah, next five or six weeks. And I think I also mentioned I've got a, a week's holiday coming up. Uh, week of the 16th, which sort of overlaps with that. Got but it. Um, all of the days that I can, I will be here. Okay. All right, buddy. Right. Take care. All right, mate. Have a good time. See Looks like you're on the way, so catch you tomorrow. On the way. All right. Talk to you later. All right. So what do we need here? It was called, and I've forgotten the name. Like, oh, look at that. There it is right there. Sharp DX. No, sharp DX, direct input, install that, and is that going to install the other one as well? Uh, there we go, it looks like the install is done. What does it say it installed? No, it didn't do the other one. Do I need the other one? Maybe I don't need it. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it to work. Um, Oh, look who's here, kids! Ah! 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 Pudding! Why pudding? Why must you dump pudding? <clears throat> that time of day. Pudding, I hope to see you on Thursday. 
Thursday, Richard Campbell's going to be here. We're going to be doing Beast Build 2022. I got a brand new cooler. It's that one right there. We'll be putting it together. I got all the parts. We started it before, got about halfway through, maybe not even that far, and we were blocked by this other cooler right there. Look out, Jensen, don't mind into it. So you see Pudding and Rory in the same room at the same time? Just so, so I have this extra cooler. I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. You know, maybe just cool me down like that. Um, not sure. Not sure what the future of that thing is. Uh, <laughs> so Jetsum's like, okay, I'm here now. Start over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we have not seen Rory and Fred in the same room at the same time. We have not seen that. Uh, okay, kids. So, anybody who's coming in, start over. Here's what's happening. Uh, this guy right here, we're making this guy fly me. That's what we're going to try and do. So, we're kind of working through that. Uh, I got my joystick listener up here. I've added in my direct input stuff. We just created a sample app over here, and it seemed to work. We got some good data in here. Uh, and we, this was the code we kind of grabbed. <coughs> That kind of got us the joystick we needed. Um, let's come in here and let's kind of paste that code in. Oh, did you get that, Visual Studio? Look at you. Look at you, Visual Studio. So proud of you. Okay. Um, so let's see. This, I think we need to... Where are we using direct input? Okay. Um, thought I had a cap set. There it is right there. Okay. Direct input. Um, I want to grab the device. <clears throat> I want to get the joystick. That's what I want to do. So I want to take this. I want to break this. Put that there. Here's my joystick. And then I want to come down and I want to. I want to create a property that uh, gets this. That. <laughs> I would leave it in the function, the lambda will keep it in scope. Weird exception. This is our, our sample app we're running. Uh, I'm just going to stop that because that's not important anymore. Um, well, kind of. Let me show you where I'm going with this. I get that it'll keep it in scope, <coughs> um, but I kind of want to simplify the code because it's all this code to like you know joystick acquire all of this stuff, which ultimately gets down to here, right? That's kind of what I want. I want to take all of this out right here and put it in, in the property is what I want to do. Something like this. And so now I'm thinking uh, if uh, that's equal to null, then we'll uh, initialize it like that. And then, uh, well, actually, we want to, hold on one second, what I want to do is I want to say, hey, if uh, it's not null, then we can simply return the joystick like that. That's kind of what I'm, this is kind of where my mind is on this. 
And so I kind of like taking this all out and away. Got some console, right line, read line stuff. We'll change this to debug. Got right line. We'll get rid of this. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, then we're going to get rid of the right line. We don't need the effects. I've got no effects here. Set the buffer size used in order to use buffer data. Acquire the joystick and return it. Let's use that, lowercase. your kids. Screech Rat! Screech Rat! How you doing, Screech Rat? If you turn on your joystick late, it will pick it up later when it comes on. Yeah, that's kind of my... That's also kind of a possibility there, too, as well, right? Um, and... Also gives us the ability to invalidate it too by setting everything to null and then try again later. Um, okay, give joystick good. Um, another beautiful day in paradise. Screech Rat, welcome. Uh, by the way, Screech Rat, two days. On Thursday, we are doing uh, Beast Build. Beast Build 2022, it's that guy right there. Uh, we got all the parts here. We're going to finish putting together my new Beast Machine Live. Richard Campbell's going to be here providing excellent expert commentary, as you can always predict from him. Um, yeah. Uh, you got, wait, you're wiping sarcasm off your lips. Oh, brother. Yeah, get that off of there, man. Um, okay. Uh, I think we're good here. I like doing this. See where it says instantiate the joystick? I kind of like... doing this instead. So instead of having a comment, we just have a method with the name. I like that kind of a thing. Um, and I almost want to... I want to make this a local and I want to return it at the end instead of using the other one uh, like that and then so then we're going to come in here and say joystick is equal to instantiate joystick like that and then we return it the next time we look for it we'll have it so that's kind of how I want to handle that um, and then, now we're in get jo joystick position, we just need this now, because this will be now in the thread. Uh, and we can just for now send it out, send the state out to the uh, debugger. And I think that's it. Okay, next we need something to say start listening. Um, this is the app. Use to control the D and D uh, show. Uh, at least it was started with that intention, but uh, more and more I started pushing the UI down into the stream decks. Uh, so we, this show is not really used, and the show's on hiatus anyway, probably till the end of the year. Um, I think I'm going to create a new, a new uh, page, though. I think to show this. That's what I think I'm going to do. <coughs> Put 
put in a UI with root. Let's see, where is it's the main window? Where's my view designer? I don't see that. tab item in here. This header is going to be called joystick. local to your basement. We'll have our own home apps to start when we connect our controllers. I'm not sure I understand what you're, where, where you, uh, your intention, what you're saying, uh, and I don't think I understand that. Um, let's see, I think I just want to put a checkbox here. Listening. And so down in here, we're going to see the joystick listener. Not quite what I want. my controller into my laptop on my desk, I'll need my own app to parrot the commands, the drone commands. Oh, right. Yeah, I should make this standalone. Uh, my intention is to make this standalone app, but just not today because of, because of time. Um, so let's see. Is it, are we okay? Is it, I'm not sure what's, Oh yeah, it's got it. Okay, so we're going to say start listening in here. And we're going to say, whoops, the other way around. Stop listening here. We also need to check to see if we're already listening. Because if we have two in a row by chance for one of these. So if we say if listening, then we're going to say return. So that prevents that. And the stop listening is just there, so that doesn't matter if we get called multiple times. Um, okay, so that gives us the ability to start listening. Uh, I think that's all we need for a real quick check to see if that part is working. Actually, there's one more thing I think I want to do. I want to go in to my drone command client. Where are you? Loading suggestions. Look at that guy right there. Nothing? Drone commands client? Like that. That's not good. Alright, there's a faster way to do this. Just gonna use code rush to find it. It's gotta be out there. Yeah. Botcore.twitch.
Uh, is it raining? No, that's it's not raining in my office. That is the sound of water flowing through the pipes. So somebody's like washing dishes or something like that upstairs. Uh, okay, drone commands client is there. Do I have a send message? The send message we just created, or no? We haven't put that out. Hector! Hector HSC. Welcome, Hector. Glad to have you with us. You know, it's not raining, but I'm using a backup microphone because this guy died uh, from a microphone standpoint uh, earlier today. The uh, It's a, a um, Bluetooth headset, and it couldn't see it as a headset anymore. You could only see it as a pair of headphones. And it just happened today when I turned on my machine, so I'm just like, really? So I think I'm going to be getting this replaced. Um, Okay, I have a better, I have something just off of Twitch. Don't I have something here? Drone commands chat. And now we're going to send something out there that says listening <coughs> to the joystick. <coughs> and down here we're going to say stop listening. Okay, now I think we can rebuild. And run. Let's see how that works. How you doing, Hector? By the way, Thursday we're finishing up Beast Build. Beast Build 2022. See you there, kids. It's going to be awesome. Build the beast of the machine. Here's the build right here. Is it starting? Did I get the missing parts? Yeah. Embarrassingly, they were in my mailbox. They weren't delivered to my door. They were just in the mailbox. <clears throat> and uh, my family discovered them today, brought them down. Uh, <coughs> Got the missing parts, but not before I overnighted and ordered a replacement cooler because I was tired of waiting for the parts to arrive. So I have a different cooler we're going to use, um, and uh, and that's it. Okay. So we're starting up. Uh, ordered from Europe. But I ordered um, a number of these parts I actually ordered from the States. And they arrived like in a couple days. I was impressed with how quickly they got here. Uh, I got the motherboard from the States. I got some of the memory, I think, from the States. Uh, you know, it's basically just looking at, okay, who can give me this stuff the quickest? Who's got the cheapest price? And in some cases, it was cheaper to order from the States and pay the import duties than it was to order locally. And in other cases, it was reversed. So I just, that's how I did it. Okay, so we are starting up. Um, just waiting on the UI to show up. The UI is almost up. <coughs> All the name, the name tags have shown up down here. Just waiting for the UI to appear. Come on, UI, where are you? Here it comes. Okay. All right, there we go. Uh, where did I put it? Joystick, right there. Listen to the joystick. I'm going to take the output. I'm going to get it up here on screen so we can see it at the same time. Um, what can I do here? Do that. So listen to joystick. I'm going to hit that. And we should hopefully see something right down here that says we're listening. 
Uh, what's going on here? Got a break point. Exception thrown. Twitch client has not been initialized and cannot be used. Please call initialize. Well, that's so polite. All right, so let's do this. If not, this dot is, oh, not is connected, is initialized, then we're going to say initialize. Oh no, credentials! Mm -hmm. Let's go find our, how we're using credentials in here. Um, I think we need something like this. Let's call it create new client. This it's kind of an interesting way to create the the, um, the client by making that call. I wonder if we have how are we doing it for How are we doing it for our other client, our um, drone commands client? Not here in this. Well, we do have a call to initialize it here. We do have the OAuth token. Initialize connections. Huh. What edits? I did, did I make an edit? Oh, it looks like I did. I see. Okay. So let's try that. So there's our initialized call right there. Uh, I want to come back up here. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to let me do that. And no. And did it, is it going to work the next time though, I'm, I'm wondering. Joystick not found. It's off. The joystick is off. We don't have. <clears throat> I think we need to do a check here. If uh, joystick is null, then what we want to do is exit. We're not going to listen. Cannot listen. Something like that. Debug dot uh, right line. No one can tell us it's just taking a while to show up here. Um, joystick not found. Then that way we won't get into this other space down below. Um, I think it might also be useful to Yeah, I think I need to check to see if joystick is null or not. Right here. Like that. And then if not, I'm going to use the local variable here instead of the, the property once I get it. Like that. Okay, let's run that to see if we get any better situation. Handshake was canceled. Yeah, that's because I've been paused here. Bunch of exceptions. I may have to restart. Maybe not. Okay, there's listen to joystick. Turn it off. 
must be connected to at least one channel. What am I missing here? Um, need to call connect on it, it looks like, after initialize. A little dangerous here. I've got to make sure I don't hover over any of these credentials right now. Um, let's see if I can come back up here by chance and execute it. Yeah, it's not liking that, but yeah, it keeps the app running. Next time I might, maybe not. Let's set a breakpoint here and try one more time to flip the switch. Uh, I'm going to hit run. Yeah. Okay, so it's not connected. So one more time, flip the switch. Waiting for the UI to come up. Just alt tab to it, but it's not appearing. What's my call stack here? What is taking my time here? Tailspire client invoke. Try to connect to the Tailspire client. So what's going on over there? Just checking the uh, IP config on it. See if it's the same. Yeah, 192.168.1.133. Right on it, I had trouble talking to the machine. We had to actually come in and see the actual machine address. So it, it is alive, should be talking and responding. There we go. There it is. Okay, one more time. And now I'm going to come up here. Hopefully it'll let me execute that now. And now will it send the message? Oh, I think it sent the message. So uh, you guys may be able to see this before I do. Drone commands twitch. Stopped. Can I type in the chat? Yes, I can, says Edmund. Stop listening to the joystick. That's sweet. Back up over here. Click it again. I think we're good ending in this breakpoint. We can end the breakpoint. Right, back over to there. Listening to the joystick. Sweet. So if it's listening to the joystick, uh, what's going on here? I got some like, exceptions thrown. That's never good. Uh, the joystick's not on. I just turned it on. So let's go back, stop listening, and listen. Okay. And can I now do something? There we go. So yeah, so now if I, uh, if I start hitting buttons on this thing, you should see some data coming out there. So there's some regular exceptions being thrown here. A little bit worrisome to me. Invalid operation exceptions. So I'm going to have to go find those in Signal R. But we also have good data coming in, too. So that's cool. Uh, okay, turn off the joystick. Listen, stop listening to it. And nothing else is coming in. So I'm going to hit these buttons and nothing else is coming in. All right. Um, I'm just looking at the uh, invalid operation exceptions. Not sure what I want to do about those. Uh, we need to make sure that the drone commands can get down to mark flies. Uh, so that means I need to be able to type in bang sl here. Like that. Oh, and it works. Okay. So that's good news. Uh, next, let's figure out our tilt. Um, I think we're in good shape here. Uh, there's our joystick listener. Uh, well, let's start listening again and, and look at what the data is going to look like. Listen to the joystick. Here we are here. Let's do my tilt. How do I want to do tilt? I think tilt's going to be the left one. Uh, this one right here. Left and right, like that. 
So it's saying, um, let's see, offset. Offset X, and so over here it's really small, and over here it's, is it bigger or not? It looks like it's offset X, where are you, offset X? God, there's so much coming by here. Uh, yeah, it's 65,000, so it's maxing out. So the same thing there. So that's offset X, what happens when I change these over here? It's rotation X and Y. So this one's called offset X. And that's what I want to actually use to rotate. Maybe I should. Maybe I should use rotation X and Y. All right, I'm going to do that. So rotation X is going to do the tilt. That's what it's going to do. It's going to control the tilt. So what we need to do is, I guess, set a breakpoint here. All right, there we go. We just got some data. And what is the state? It's rotation X. Okay. So we're going to, let me get rid of the, that so we're not blocking the code. We're going to say, hey, if state dot I think it was offset. Rotation X, sweet. All right, cool. So that is rotation X. State dot value. <clears throat> so now what we want to do is we want to say, we want to create like a map function that takes the value and maps it Map is a 16-bit value, so from 0 to 655, 65,000, to one of two values. And so I'm going to take it to negative 90 to 90. Is that true? For the tilt. Do I want to allow you to go upside down? I'm thinking no. I'm not going to do that. If you want to go upside down, it will be a button for tricks. For doing loops and things like that. So we're going to create this 16-bit uh, map function right here. This is going to return a value. It's going to say uh, new, or this is going to be a, I guess a double. That's going to be the going to be the new tilt in degrees. That's going to be equal to, to equal to that. Let's declare that, <coughs> and let's change all of these to doubles. And this is going to be my min, this is going to be my max, like this. And then we're going to say, um, <coughs> Uh, map value is equal to value one, which I think I'm going to rename to just value, divided by uh, 65536, I think, is that, which I almost think is like short dot max value or something like that. It's that divided by that. Uh, times my max minus my min, and then it's all of that plus min. So this is going to give me a number between 0 and 1. We're going to multiply that by the, the span between max and min, uh, and then we're going to add it to min. Like that. That's my map value, and I guess we just return that. 
I want to reposition mid at the beginning here. I think it might be a little clearer. Um, all right, let's try that. So new tilt degrees. Uh, what's my value, by the way, for this? It's, so it should be close to zero. This is what we're expecting to be in here, is this result. Uh, hit F10, but didn't stop. Oh, it looks like I lost, lost my, my video for a second there. Um, all right, let's try it again. Uh, send some data. This one I did switch. I pressed 34, it's what it's at. The new tilt degrees is about 3.4. Okay, cool. Next. Um, there's a lot of precision here, and I think I want to round it. I want to round it down. And I think I want to do the rounding right inside of here. Two. just compiled so we can't take that piece right down there. Sounds like thunder to me. It sounds like it to me too. Uh, yeah, I think it actually could be thunder. Um, all right, so let's do this. Math.round. This number of decimals. I'm going to say zero. I guess that's what math round is going to do anyway. I'm going to change it to just call the whole just math around the whole thing. Okay. So if it's not equal to the last tilt sent, And then we're going to send that command out. So we're going to go drone commands client. No, we're going to say twitch, which is in over in what bot core dot twitch dot drone commands chat. And now we want to send the tilt command over to it, which as I recall is tilt, followed by the degrees. Like that. I think that's it. Let's see if we can come back up here and run this. All right. I'm going to clear the breakpoint, and we're going to launch me, and now I'm going to, well, I'm doing the tilt. Wait, oh, it is working. Oh, wow, it's totally working. Okay, that's cool, but why is it not moving me? Um... Okay, that's really cool. It's a little, it's a little, there's a little bit of lag. Yeah. Oh, but that's so cool. I can actually, okay, but I'm putting it all the way to the left now, and it's not moving left. Why aren't you moving left? Did I get blocked, I wonder? Maybe, maybe not. I'm sending a lot, sending the tilt command at 77 out. No, nothing else is nothing else has changed over here. I think I got blocked because I probably you know sent a bunch of stuff out here. And the broadcaster, huh? 
We send one command to the drone commands every 200 milliseconds, and it has to go through all the backlog. Oh, all the back data until it gets to the latest command. Uh, must be connected to at least one channel. Yeah, it got disconnected. So I think we're sending messages out too fast to it. Updating a try block around active statement, fine, fine, fine. I want to uh, just run to here, now we'll update it, car honking, and then run. Must be connected to at least one channel. Now this, I think, is going to come in and fix it. All right, and the next one, no, the connect didn't work. I think we spammed it too too hard, and it's uh, it's not so happy about that. Um, not sure how to get around this. Let me turn that off for now. Um, Let's go figure out uh, the this side of it. What if we just got the last? Yes, no. <clears throat> Maybe what we need to do is collect this data. Yeah, I think we do this. I think, here's, so here's my idea. We take this, bring it up here. Then we take this outside the for loop. So we use the for loop to collect everything. So that'll get us, if we get a whole bunch of pieces coming in, we get all that buffered data, we go through all of it. And whatever the last thing is, we use it that. So then instead of sending out hundreds of these all at once, we're going to send out you know, just the last one every 200 milliseconds. So let's do that. Um, I don't think we need this state anymore. Well, yeah, I know it's useful for now. So, um, okay. So that's rotation, which we said was the button on the right, I think, as I recall. Rotation X. Um, yeah, let's, I, I think we want to do thrust next, is what we want to do. Uh, I also need to compare against double dot min value right here. New tilt, tilt degrees is not equal to that, and uh, it's not equal to last tilt sent. Then we're going to send out that new tilt command to it. So that, I think, is that feels pretty good to me. Um, the main problem is, though, is I think we're still catching, we're still, we're still getting exceptions down in this space. We tried to set something up. Let's see what happens if I, yeah, adjust the down here. So um, what's the problem here? How do we reconnect? Do we recall initialize? I think we need to call initialize again. So if it's not 
initialized, what if we change this code to be, if it's not initialized or it's uh, not connected, then that will get us into the connect that we need, and that might get us out of this exception. Let's see if that helps at all now. Nope, it's only exception. Yeah, as soon as I touch the joystick, we're in that exception. Okay, dangerous, danger, danger. I'm setting a breakpoint right here. Whoops. Just got to be really careful. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Huh. Oh, because it's initialized? It is connected. Oh wait, we're down here on this line. Oh wait, it did work. For a second I thought we were down below. Oh no, must be connected to at least one channel. Maybe we need to disconnect. Is there a disconnect command? We got disconnect? I do. Let's see if I can run that. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know. Am, am I wrong for wanting that? What is it? It's because I put braces around it? There it is, okay. Um, let's get in there, get out of it. Let's do that, but just in case, let's just put the line of code right here for a second and execute it. And now let's execute the connect again. And and if we've done that, can we now try to send the message out? Ah. Oh. Still, I think i got to get out of here. Rebird Dev says, if you hit the checkbox, then it won't nag you until the next time you start a VS. Um, yeah. I wonder if I've got a punishment kind of thing on this. Uh, I think I'm going to start it. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to restart it. Uh, close it down and restart I really think I said the wrong thing with those hot reload warnings. It's not like it's going to change the code I need to write, so why bother me? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that weird beard. Um, Tell me what you mean by that. I, I want more, more information on that. Uh, Evan says, all the tilt commands cause it to tilt. Yeah, you're right. It did. Uh, okay, we've re we've shut down the app. Let's see if a restart gets us any closer. And with our new code, you know, I'm wondering if we got kind of a timeout here from being able to send messages. <coughs> Surely he's got his drones in formation right here. No, what are my build errors? Could not copy. Is that Dropbox right there? Let's see what it is. I'm going to pause Dropbox. There's my build cam for you. You wrote code that hot reload could not handle without rebuilding the app and restarting the hot reload. So he's warned you that it needed to rebuild the app. Right, no, I got that. Emma, Emma said the wrong thing with those hot reload warnings. So is it that they shouldn't show the warnings? 
or something else. Oh no, still can't copy that DHDM file. That's not good. That could be locked by Visual Studio. I'm going to shut down Visual Studio. We'll restart Visual Studio. To me, if I hot reload and VS needs to reload the app, then it should do it without waiting on me to give the OK. Ah, so to me, that's not OK. I don't. I, I need to keep running. I can't rebuild the app because that's going to um, that's going to uh, that's going to shut down my session, which takes a while to start up. So for me, there's penalties with regards to leaving the app. I want to stay in that space. What I would prefer, actually, is that I would like Hot Reload to work in more places. Like in the example where, hey, I can't do the try-catch. You can't modify try-catch because it's the active try statement. Uh, well, I could if you waited until I got out of it. And a lot of times you can, you know, save my place, go move the execution pointer outside of it, you know, make the change, then allow me to enter back into it, for example, something like that. Um, but there's, I think, way more that Visual Studio team could do with regards to supporting hot reload scenarios. Um, we need a mark things command to add the thought bubbles above mark head. You have that, Edmund. Uh, you should be able to type bang mark colon and then an open paren and then whatever you want to mark thinks this is cool, that should work like that. That's your syntax for a thought bubble. And if you want a speech bubble, uh, you just do it in quotes. So that would be Mark actually says this is cool. Okay? Got it, Edmund. You should be able to do that. Let me know if you have any problems. Level 4 users and up. Edmund is not a level 4 user. Let's see if we can make that change right now. Edmund, we're going to level you up. Level up. You're level three. And now you're level four. You got it. Should be able to do it. Okay. <laughs> Here's the build cam. Build succeeded. This bugs me that this starts up every time. I'm like, what? There's no option here that I can see to turn this off? Settings. We'll see if we need a demote admin later. <laughs> nice. I don't think I have a level down command. Uh, I thought I had options for it, but I'm just going to close it down. It scares me in terms of like CPU usage, things like that. Disclaimer! Mark doesn't know what he's doing! You don't, you don't come here for the knowledge, kids. That's not why we're here. Not here for the knowledge. Um... Right, that's, that's what we're here for. That's what you're here for. Uh, okay, the app is starting up. That's the guy that we're working to control this thing with. Getting ready. Control it. Jensen, that's a level 41 spell. You want the brand new car. It's a brand new car! Yeah, by the way, we're going to be building this guy right here with uh, DDR5 memory. With uh, Lightning Gen 5 PCIe's. I don't know what any of this stuff means. And, uh, with quintuple, that means five, M2 connectors. That's awesome. 
super beautiful for me because I'm like sometimes creating a lot of visual effects and things like that. So I've got like, you know, my hard disks loaded with all just massive gigabytes of video because the video I use often has alpha channels in it and that makes the videos oh, giant. Whoa. Okay, let's see, how are we doing? We got the app up now. There's the app. Let's drag it up here. Let's uh, clear out the name plates. Uh, we can go to the joystick page. Say, listen to the joystick. Wait, I checked it, I thought. Did I not? There it is. It's checked. Listen to the joystick. Okay. And I've got now listening to the joystick showing up right down there. Just there's the end of that text right there. Uh, that's good. So it set the command out. Can I... Ooh, there we go. Got the tilt. All right, let's go launch me. And now let's try the tilt. Mm -hmm. Tilt is two. Three and two. It's only going to two or three. So what's wrong with our rounding? Uh, I don't understand that at all. Or is it that I'm using the wrong one? Is it that I should be touching this one instead? There it is. That's the problem. Okay, my control's over on this side. Okay. Got some boxes over here. Get out of the way. Get out of the shop. Okay. All right, so this is my tilt. There we go. That's, that's not the best flyer. What is this PVKAC? What is that screech rat? What is that? Okay, so let's see. Launch again. Uh, tilt a little bit this way. Oh, you know what? Let's do this maybe. Let's turn off. I feel like it's a little stuttery, and I think it might be because of the joystick. I'm going to take the joystick camera off and see if it's any smoother. There we go. And I need I need a separate thrust control. We've got to build that in quickly here. Hold on. Whoa! Hold on, let me get this down off of here. Okay. So back over. And I need a separate thrust control. A problem exists between controller and chair. Hmm. What's the, where's that? Okay. Yeah, I think, all right, here we go. Oops, do a launch again. Okay. It seems to tilt really fast to the left. I'm just pushing it just a little bit. So I think I'm misinterpreting the data is what I think I'm doing. Our controller to chair interface problem, okay. So I'm like bending it just a little bit. It puts me back tilt to zero. Tilt one or two, just not much. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. <clears throat> All right, let's figure out thrust. <clears throat> so thrust. I think I want to. Hold on a sec. <laughs> I think I want to... <clears throat> Hold on, music, I lost music. Let me get music back. I think I want to round tilt down to five degree increments is what I think I want to do. 
and I still am not hearing music. Why am I not hearing music? That's there. I'll refresh the drum game. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so we'll do snap two, and then we'll pass in five to it. And then we're say, um, call this value. <coughs> Return value. Uh, I forget how to do this. Divided by, well, we need a second parameter here, don't we? Um, I think it's. I want to round the div of this. So the value is, say, 9, and we want to snap it to 2. I start by saying 9 divided by 2, and then I multiply it. I get the round of it, and then I multiply it by snap value again, I think. So that goes, takes me to from 4 to 8. I think that's right. I almost want to step through it though. Like that. Uh, that's what I think it is. Let's see if that changes, just that change there. Am I just going to see in zeros and fives now? Yeah, that looks like that worked. Cool. Okay. Good. Better. All right, so there's my snap two function. That looks like that's working. Um, next, we need to grab... Uh, let's take offset Y. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just X. Okay, so we'll just take Y. If it's Y, then we're going to say new thrust is equal to snap to Send the value in, and we're going to send it uh, from 1 to 9. And we're just rounding that, so we don't really need a snap to on it. I think that's good. There's my new thrust. And then we want to do something similar for the thrust. With new thrust. is not equal to that in the last thrust sent. And the last thrust sent is equal to new thrust. And we're going to send the command, which I think is thrust. We should check that. Because I forget. Thrust 9. Nope, that didn't work. <clears throat> I thought that was our command. Did we not get that right? Tilt, it looks like T-I-L-T. Let me try it again. T-I-L-T.
No, the commands are not listened to now. Why is that? <clears throat> So the drone command channel doesn't see, we don't see what you're listening to it. <laughs> I don't see that in the chat, says Edmund. Yeah, I'm typing it into the other chat room is what I'm doing. Um, oh, Edmund, I didn't see your floor value divided by five times five. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's close to what I had. I didn't use floor though for snap. Yeah, we are in sync on that. Round is better than floor? Fine, <laughs> okay. Fine. Uh, okay. So, wait, does thrust work here? Is it the right command? Let's at least verify that. It is. So the command is right. <clears throat> But the drone commands aren't being listened to, right? I can type that in over here and we're not hearing it. I don't understand why that's the case. I'm going to try, I don't think this is going to work, I'm going to try refreshing the browser source. It doesn't feel like that's the problem. I think the problem is inside the app. That's what I think. Um, and we're not, I don't know, I just refreshed it. Let's see what happens. There's a launch. Oh, and it's typing in tilt 45. Yeah, it didn't look like that worked. Yeah, it's not working. Drone commands are not being listened to. It seems to indicate we have to restart this guy. That's what I think we have to do. Well, wait, did you just get it to turn? Hold on. Was it just taking a while to listen to it? Uh, I think it was. Does that mean now I can have control? All right, now I've got thrust. Thrust is one. Oops, I got to reverse them. I'm trying to. I'm trying to calm me down, but I'm just. I'm doing the opposite here. Okay. First of all, I got to reverse them. I totally got these reversed. Um, Can I reverse these? What will happen in that case? This will be a negative number. I think it might work. Okay. Yeah, perfect. It was subtracts, as I mean. I think it's going to work. Um, let's see if that works here. Let's get a new launch. And nice. And I'm pulling back. Okay. Part of the problem, okay, let's see if I can get this. All right, tilting a little bit. It's the animation of me is not as smooth. And I'm not exactly sure why. But I've got relative control over it. So up. All right, I'm going to change the controller on that from Y to whatever one is hooked up. It looks like it is um, 
it's rotation Y, the one on the right, that's what I want to hook up to the thrust. So this becomes a rotation Y. <clears throat> Next, I need to get my, um, my forward and backwards motion. <laughs> uh, let's save that for tomorrow. I'm going to say, let's end the show. We're going to get a, a rate going. We'll do that. Uh, just because I'm losing my voice a little bit and getting close to dinner time over here, 9 o'clock. Uh, I'll send you over to Tim Bode. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us, for hanging out. Um, appreciate your assistance. Thanks, Edmund. Thanks, Surly. Thanks, Screech Rat. Thanks, Weird Beard. All well, you guys, be sure to show up on Thursday for Beast Build 2022. It's going to be fun. Uh, see you soon.